Can you feel her presence? Because she's still here. She's always here. Lady Margaret Drummond, once considered to be the most beautiful girl in Scotland. Certainly King James IV of Scots thought so. He loved her. He made love to her in a suite of rooms just behind the wall. Rooms where she still goes, the last place perhaps she was happy. Some men of an evening see her beautiful, shapely form, black hooded, walking under these buttresses of the palace. Some see her turn and walk through what looks like solid wall. But if you look carefully, the remains of a blocked doorway can be seen. Some are attracted by her beauty that they try to get close. And as she turns to greet them, she pulls back the cowl. Ah! The face that stares has always been described to me as horrific. The lips hang in bloody tatters down her chin. Her eyes stare sightless like saucers, and her right cheekbone protrudes through the flesh. She was loved by King James IV, but he could not officially marry her. They may have done in St. Michael's Church secretly, and according to the Spanish ambassador, Don Pedro de Ayala, whose townhouse stood in Linlithgow High Street until the 1960s, according to him, they did marry but they could never admit it. She was not a big enough catch for the King of Scots. She brought with her no, um, she brought with her no attraction to the King. He had to marry an English princess, the daughter of King Henry the Seventh, Margaret Tudor. Despite the fact that she was thirteen and he was in his thirties, that meant nothing. A dynastic connection had to be made to link England and Scotland together. The problem was how to get rid of Margaret Drummond, the king's beloved mistress. The solution was murder. In the year 1500, she went to visit her father, Lord John Drummond, in the family house Drummond Castle near Creef. To her delight and surprise, she found her two sisters had the same idea. And she sat down at breakfast with Euphemia and Sibylla to exchange family news. Within minutes, all three girls were dead, poisoned by arsenic. Somebody had placed arsenic in the porridge cooking pot in the kitchen, meaning to murder Margaret to eliminate her, not knowing that her two sad sisters would join her in the same fate. Imagine the father, Lord John Drummond, coming in and seeing his three girls clutching their stomachs in agony, dying on the floor. He had them buried with pomp and ceremony under the high altar of Dunblane Cathedral, and to this day you can see their three brass crest stones above. He buried them there, but they did not remain undisturbed. I've seen the family monument. I've seen the diary kept by the Drummond family, still in Drummond Castle. And as I looked through, I read about the murder, and then 200 years later, read about the discovery of the bodies again. A worker, building a new floor in the cathedral, saw a loose flag and lifted it. Letting himself down, he entered the Drummond crypt and saw the three lead coffins of the Drummond sisters. He could not resist. One of them, clearly marked, was that of Margaret Drummond, the king's mistress, perhaps his wife. She would have been buried with wealth, with jewels. He had to look. Fetching a crowbar, he began to roll the lead lid of the coffin back, as you would a sardine tin, and into view came the beautiful, naked body of Margaret Drummond. Perfect, glowing, pink, the flesh as in life. Only one stitch of clothing, a Veronica, as the book says, covered her face. I discovered a Veronica is a handkerchief named after the lady who mocked Christ's brow on the Via Dolorosa to Calgary. He had to look into the face of what was considered the most beautiful girl in 16th century Scotland. And so he lifted the Veronica back. Yeah! The family record, written clearly, confirmed. The workman screamed and left, and reported later, the flesh of the face was corrupted. The lips hung in bloody tatters. The eyes stared like saucers. The cheekbone protruded through the flesh. An exact identical face to the one reported here on the lady in black. And I discovered why. The family to keep their beautiful daughter beautiful forever, had seared the body. They had waxed it. Also, of course, arsenic is a very good preserver of human flesh. The face, to make it beautiful, they had put on makeup, lipstick, mascara, 
But in those days, such chemicals contained corrosive substances, mercury, antimony, bismuth, and they had eaten away the flesh of the once beautiful Margaret Drummond. She walks here still, shapely as ever, into the room where she was last happy, but her face reflects the agony of her death. Any man who sees her has never yet had the courage to do perhaps what she wants, to be loved again, to be admired again, to have those blood-stained lips kissed, and only then perhaps she will settle to eternal sleep.